Judd Trump to get us underway then in this best of nine frame encounter, a place in the last 16 of the China Open up for grabs. First to five to go through. Yeah, the defending champion. Just look at the draw, actually, Phil. You, I think you've got to say that the, the bottom half is, is heavily, more heavily loaded with the top stars and the top half where, where Judd is. Yeah, the winner of this plays either Tian Peng Fei of China or Martin Gould. The one player who could be displaced as regards automatic qualification for the Crucible is Ryan Day, who lost in qualifying. But there are only five players now, according to my maths, which isn't the best, who could conceivably <laughs> displace him. Good opening red from Trump. More on that shortly. Yeah, a little bit unlucky that uh, the white's finished where it has. I uh, don't think the black goes, but it just, just play a safety hit. Could play off the brown, dragged him behind the green, actually, brown on the side cushion. Yeah, Martin Gould is currently in 17th spot, so were he to make the semi-finals, he would actually take that 16th spot. And, of course, if you're outside the 16, Mike, you've got to win three qualifying rounds to get to the crucial. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Mind you, we said that last year. Look just what Ding did. You know, he, he came through the qualifiers, didn't do him any harm, got into the final. Really tightened up his game, so. And the other players who could make it, theoretically, are Ricky Walden, Michael Holt, Mark Williams, and Stephen Maguire, who has to win the tournament. That's the equation for Maguire. Yeah, I think Mark's probably about the same, isn't it? Is it a final spot or, or possibly winning it, Mark Williams, to, to get himself into the 16? A final spot would just about do it for him. Mm. So there's a lot to play for this week. £85,000 of the winner on Sunday. This guy might be there. Yes, yeah, made the point earlier this week that the only concern for Judd Trump and his uh, fans is that he's peaking too soon. But he is the player to beat right now. There's no question about it. He has been so consistent this season. And he hasn't let the disappointments, Mike, of losing some close finals affect him. He came right back, having lost the Welsh Open in a... Final frame decider against Bingham to win the Players' Championship. Yeah, he, he said that, you know, he wants trophies, he wants more trophies in the cabinet, and he's been knocking on the door for a while, so... Big day for this, young man. I think, uh, to, just going back to Judd, I think his game's in, in that good a shape, Phil. He's got a great chance at the Crucible this year. Currently joint favourite with the bookmakers, alongside defending champion Mark Selby. With Ronnie O'Sullivan, the third favourite behind them. Bit of value in the best, some of the rest of the field actually. 12s, 14s, 20s. Michael Fu, I think it's 12s. Ding at 14, something like that. Well, what about that? Tremendous what? red. But anyway, but it's just the little matter of the this event this week, and this is a great event in its own right, it really is. I mean, the, the boys love coming to China, the, the, the audiences are very enthusiastic, they love to to, uh, to see their stars here in Beijing, or at all the tournaments in China, to be honest. They certainly uh, put out the red carpet for these boys. Three. Well, of course, this was the tournament that started it all for Trump back in 2011. This is where he made his big breakthrough, and of course, he followed it up with his run to the final at the Crucible, which remains the only time he's made the final so far in Sheffield. That was 2011. So very happy memories for Trump. And he's going for his third China Open title this week, having regained it 12 months ago, beating Ricky Walden in the final. All started there, wasn't it, when Ding Junhui beat Stephen Hendry in that final, what was that, seven or eight years ago, something like that now? As a wild card, didn't win any prize money. Yeah, unbelievable. That's really where the explosion of snooker in, in China took off. Yes, and Ding's in action later, and he could, of course, face hey. Ronnie O'Sullivan in the last 16, and what an occasion that would be. I'm not sure who the fans would be supporting, given the extraordinary support O'Sullivan got yesterday. Hmm. You, you won't want to miss that one, would you? Will be a special atmosphere if it happens, but of course their opponents will have something to say about it, I'm sure.
They've met once before, and it was here in China, this pair, a couple of years ago, and Trump won 5 0 on that occasion. He's only dropped one frame in his first two matches so far. But that's a surprise. We've seen very few Fantastic. errors like that in recent times from Trump. And a let off for Sharav. Six and a half thousand pounds guaranteed for the players who've reached this stage. Eight thousand guaranteed for the winner today. And then it starts to go up pretty significantly. Been a bit lucky there, got the double kiss, but the cue ball's finished tied to the cushion. We should really just clip off the red nose the pink, but he's looking at this red on the left hand side. No, well he's he's taking this on. This is tough. He could get on the black if he knocks it in. Hmm, well might have been a little bit too early to be trying those. And uh, it could prove to be costly. Turn pro a couple of years ago via Q School, Eden Sharov. Made the last 32 of the recent shootout. Which, of course, is now a full-blown ranking event. Indeed, it was Anthony McGill's triumph in the shootout that has enabled him to seal his spot for Sheffield after a largely indifferent season. It's a controversial one, isn't it, Mike? The shootout and whether yeah. it should be... A full-blown ranking event, and even Anthony McGill, after his triumph, which was clearly hugely beneficial to him, both financially in terms and of his ranking as well, he, he's of the view that it shouldn't be, really. Yeah, there was a lot of the players saying, saying the same thing. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with the next year, actually. It's, it's always been classed as a fun event, isn't it? But this is, this is the real business, isn't it? This is the real deal. Major ranking event in China, with the worlds to come. 14. Fifteen. John in here with a good chance to seal the opening frame. Just get the feeling though, if he wins the first frame and then the second one, he could be off into the distance. So Eden's going to have to be careful. I mean, he took that red on. It was a tough red to take on, really. He's at this early stage in the match. Hasn't landed perfect here. He wanted to be straight on this red. Not sure if the black goes to the left. Just to see how he plays this. He might just screw the white over for position on the black. Well, obviously it does go. Changed his cue last season, Judd. He's settled into this new one. Playing really well with it. Yes, that looks like a very shrewd decision on his part. Yes, uh, went to John Paris in London and said, please make me a new queue. I think he got three or four, actually, but this is the one he settled into, and uh, it's been very lucrative. Two Sorry. or three players have done that over the last couple of seasons. Sean Murphy, another one, and John Higgins, of course. Sean Murphy's queue, the one he used to play with, he's had that since he was a youngster, since he was about eight, nine, ten years of age, and it was about 800 years old, actually, the queue, a really old queue, uh, Phil, but it just uh, disintegrated, really. And sometimes the, the the queue goes brittle. The oils are not as good as they are in after a little while, and he said it just completely broke down, you know. So I had to get another queue. And and Sean's still in the mix, and he's playing some good stuff. Not try, not probably been as consistent this year as he would have liked to have been. But who knows? Suddenly he could 
turn the switch, turn it on here, win, and then go into Sheffield with a lot of confidence. Yes, of course, he won in Gloucester, didn't he? Mm. Which is now also a fully-fledged ranking event. Beating Judd Trump in the final. <laughs> Gloucester, I meant Gibraltar, of course. Well, they both start with a G, but apart from that, not much in common. A few miles away from each other. <laughs> Yes, Eden Sharaf actually practices in Gloucester. Hails from Alloa in Scotland. But already Trump at the snooker's required stage once this black disappears. Crowd acknowledge that. He's in good form, Judd, there's no doubt about that. His confidence is high. Yeah, the question today is whether Eden Sharaf is going to be able to be solid enough to apply any pressure. Because if Trump gets chances, he's going to take them, and he's going to take them quickly. 57. Made three centuries in four frames in beating Jason Weston 5-0 in the first round. 69 for the season. But still a long way off Neil Robertson's extraordinary tally of 103, which might never be beaten. The break of 65, more than enough to clinch the frame. Eden Sharif coming back with an eye on getting his arm going. Obviously the frame has gone. Well, that's not a bad idea for the underdog who wants to try and get a feel for the conditions so that he's better placed to make a fist at the second frame. Eight. Currently ranked at 96 in the world, Eden Sharaf. 87 is his best, that was achieved earlier this year. He's made a couple of centuries during the campaign. And an excellent win over Ross Muir in the previous round. A 5-0 victory, so he can certainly play. He also beat Jamie Jones 5-3 in qualifying. Two fine wins, so Trump won't be taking him lightly, that's for sure. First blood to Martin Gould against Tian Peng Fei. Big break from Gould in the opening frame. The winner of that to play the winner of this in the round of 16. John Higgins has taken the first frame against Mark Davis on table two. And likewise, Ali Sorry. Carter has taken the opener against Michael White. So Eden Sharaf gets his arm going with that little run of 30, but Judd Trump's break of 65 was the key contribution, and he takes the opening frame. So a good start for our defending champion, Judd Trump, with that run of 65. A moment, but anyway, here we go with frame two. Break off is an important shot for Eden Sharaf with Judd Trump so deadly from long range. That's not a bad one.
I think that's might not quite be a, a snooker. It wasn't far away. Yeah, see so Shav can just cut this red. He's played one. First blood to Sean Murphy against uh, Gary Wilson. 1-0 to Murphy. Michael Holt's taken the opening frame against his good friend Mark Williams. Both of those players could theoretically still qualifiers of right for the world championship like a bit of banter on twitter between those two don't they they're, they're, they're at it all the time well of course they played at the world championship last year and before each session they gave each other a hug <laughs> <laughs> something new on me but there we go i don't think you'd ever see stephen henry do that nothing wrong with sharing the love i guess not gonna go there Good red from Judd. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of respect, is there? Flip. Yes, and Holt made a blistering start in that match before Williams reined him in. So he Neil Robertson in the first round, didn't he? The hit man. Yeah. Terrific performance. One of the best wins of his career. Well, I think is that that's the thing today in this in this world that we live in. Phil, there isn't enough respect, is there? It's gone out the window, I'm afraid. Some of the the moral core is uh, is definitely gone out the window. Well, that's not bad. He, I think he can cut this red back in. He's got the one to the yellow pocket. guarantee where the white was going to finish. Now he's got the problem of the red down the table. I mean, Judd was a little bit unlucky there going into the pack, landing on nothing, but he had to try and cover that red, but he didn't do, but still a good pot. Now, this is probably the first real chance that Eden's had, actually, in this match, and let's see what he can do with this one. He's got to take the game to Judd. He knows that. It's actually probably better off seeing 
the cue ball disappear there because it was heading very much towards the business end of proceedings. Yeah, I think if a knuckle, I think there was a red onto the right corner. So he's, I mean, he shouldn't have missed the green, but he's had a bit of a result. Managed to cover it with the other red, but Jude could play a plant here or he could play cushion first. Now, if he plays the plant, there's a chance of getting on the black. But the red is close enough to the pocket to play cushion first. He's playing the plant. I think he's trying to stay on the black here. Oh, he's got the double kiss part. That will do. Perfect position to go with it. As I mentioned, the red was close enough to for that to happen, really, with the double kiss. He's in again. Could this be 2-0? Slipped enough the, the near jaw, but it's okay. Just a little, probably a little cannon into the pink here. Hold for the red. Part four. Part five. Well, they're all there. It's just a question of keeping control of that cue ball. There's no doubt, Phil, he's in great form, isn't it? And he has been for a few months, you know. Looking at one or two of the other players in the field, but no, this, this could be his defending champion, and who knows, he could retain the title this week. He's playing well enough. Well, to win two ranking events in one season these days is some feat, given the strength and depth. He's achieved that already, but he wants 40. at least one more before the season's done. That's why you, you think about what Ding did a couple of seasons ago, winning five in one season, you know, it was an aired off since Stephen Hendry did it a few years ago. So, uh, as you say, with the, the amount of snooker the boys are playing and also the amount of uh, talent that's around and the players, that was a great achievement as well. Yes, and I think it was really important for Trump's confidence that he landed the title in the Players' Championship because he'd had some near misses in recent times, lost to Liang in the final of the English Open, lost, as we mentioned, to Murphy in Gibraltar, and, of course, to Bingham in a final frame decider at the Welsh Open. And as well as he's played, he desperately wanted another bit of silverware. He's got that now.
And he's got this frame as well. He's, he's about to go 2-0 up. 55. Well, that puts the frame beyond any sort of doubt. Only 51 remaining, so it's going to be 2-0 in pretty quick time. Eden Sharaf missing a pretty straightforward green when he had a chance to score himself earlier in the frame. 61. So a brace of 60 plus breaks, enough for Trump to double his lead. Eden Sharaf concedes. And the defending champion is looking good again. That's 12 frames out of 13 so far at the China Open this year for the man they call the Juddernaut. He leads Eden Sharaf by two frames to nil. Of Scotland by two frames to nil. John Higgins in action over on table two against Mark Davis. Let's just check in on what's happening there. Higgins, of course, won the opening frame. They haven't played for a couple of years, actually. Higgins and Davis, and Davis leads the head-to-head 5-4. -head He's got a pretty decent record against the Wizard, but as you can see, playing catch-up. Plenty of points still on the table in frame two, Mike. Yeah, missed the cannon there, though, into the pack. That's a poor shot, really, from the yellow. It was a perfect angle, Three. and that's a, a big target to hit. So he won't be best pleased with that shot, actually. He, if he got the reds open, he could have uh, tried to get the second frame on the board. Davis, who made not one, but two maximum breaks earlier this year, in the Championship League, the first he'd ever made, and he's the oldest player to do so at 44. Yeah, and the other thing is, is you can't really discount John Higgins this week, uh, Phil. He's playing some good stuff at the moment, and, you know, he looks determined. Had that tremendous success at the back end of last year. Judd Trump then breaking off in frame three. He's lost just one frame at this year's... China Open Tournament. This is third match. Winner to play either Tiang Pengfei or Martin Gould. Gould has now gone 2-0 up on the Chinese, so he's looking good. One of the players who could yet qualify for the Crucible. With a good run here. Well, he's looking to attack, isn't he, Eden Sharaf? But if you're going to take on Reds like that against Trump, you've got to get them. He's been a little bit unlucky there with the double kiss. I mean, uh, another day he might have got away with that, but judge straight back in here in the third frame. What? Sean Murphy has doubled his lead over Gary Wilson, so it's Murphy 2-0 up. And Michael White has just made a big break to level against Ali Carter at one all. Wow. <laughs> I was with you there. That was side door, wasn't it? We've seen one or two tables this season that have hey. been... Very tough in terms of the corner pocket drop, but this wow. one, from what I've seen so far, has been a little more on the generous side. Uh, it's amazing, really, isn't it? Because uh, you wonder how that can happen, um, because the template is exactly the same. It has been for the last 25, 30 years. But, of course, new cloth on the angles of the pockets and that, they're a little bit silkier, a little bit softer as they go in. Yeah, and I guess they're all screwed together very slightly differently, aren't they? Mm. Well, if it's just put the templates in the pocket to make sure that they're absolutely spot on and just keep nudging them to make sure it's, it is right. But anyway, it doesn't matter. That, the black went in and Judd's still in here. Part four. Part five. Might have just dropped on this back red. Well, I don't know. Has he gone too far? Well, if he has, he's playing this red to the centre. Stun around the back of the black. Oh, that's a great pot. And you've got the cannon into the black, and he's managed to land on it. 
great red. Yes, he didn't play the can into the black, he played around it, but that will do. There aren't many players that have taken that on. Well, you won't be taking any more on from there. 40. Well, the bonus is the touching ball, so you can just play away from the pack here. Put the white behind one of the ball colours. But he's got a good 40-point lead in this uh, third frame. Just on 40. Of course, he's got a maximum there, Phil. Five reds, five blacks. Yeah, a small matter of £30,000, a rolling 147 prize this week. And, of course, if no-one makes one, it moves up to 35000 for the season finale in Sheffield. Just be able to see the uh, the pink, just clip off it. Well, if he could have seen the pink to pot it, I think he would have taken it on. No doubt about that. Yeah, I think you can just clip off the edge of the pink for safety. That's from what? It's not backing away from anything, but uh, that wasn't too far away either. Not much on the air for that uh, young man. I think he should probably play a safety here and just wait. He's not playing the red. I think he's playing the safety, I think. Hmm. I think that could have been... An attempted pot. Now, can you just get through the gap here between the brown and the pink? I mm, think you can. Oh, that's amazing. Hang on, hang on. Oh, it's amazing. That another day that would have been covered. Yeah, and I don't think there's any doubt that Judd Trump is the best long potter in the game right now. He's always been terrific from distance. Neil Robertson would have certainly rivaled him in that department, but right now, for me, Trump is head and shoulders above everyone from long range. Yeah, I think you've got. To, I think he's taken over the mantle from uh, from Mark Williams. Really, Mark's another one, single ball potter, terrific, but not quite as Bramble. consistent as he was in these days. And it's such an asset, isn't it, when you've got the break building power of Trump? If you can get in from long range, then it's such a potent combination. Yeah, and the thing is as well, Phil. You know. It, it, Got control of the table, haven't you? You know, if you if you're not on a collar, you can lay the snooker. Just gives you control of the table, and then you can decide what you want to do. You were saying, Phil, look at this for a pot. I mean, it's the consistency that he has from that kind of distance that's really remarkable. 
And when you factor in that he's made a season's best 69 centuries and his safety game is very solid as well. He is the all-round package these days, Trump. Well, as we've mentioned before, a lot of people are fancying him this year at Sheffield. He's in good shape. There's no, no doubt about that. His game is definitely in good shape. Yeah, the question is whether he's going to be able to handle the pressure of being the favourite. He'll know that there are plenty talking about him because of what he's done this season. I think it's about getting that first one under the belt, isn't it? If he got the first one like Ding, he'd probably win two, three, four, possibly. He's young enough. But it's just that first one, getting that sort of monkey off your back and then thinking, well, I've done it once, I know I can do it again. Yes, and Stephen Hendry likened him to Jimmy White recently and said that it's very important for Trump to avoid becoming another one of the great players not to have won the world title. And, of course, with every passing year, it gets that bit harder to do it. So he'll want to strike sooner rather than later. Get that monkey off his back and then, as you say, who knows what he could go on to achieve because he is still very young. He's only 27. He's got at least another decade at the top of the game if he wants it. But as we know, Jimmy, of course, is a prime example of this. It takes more than a wonderful talent. Once again, Trump over the winning line comfortably, just 59 remaining, so three snookers required to tie. Mm, don't think there's any real chance there, but Eden's just taken the opportunity to get some uh, get some practice in here, try and get the cue arm going. He hasn't had a lot of table time. What? Sixteen. I don't start sixteen. your pockets here because Eight. with the frame one anything's possible with Trump well, that was pretty and conservative by his standards but he's breezed into a 3-0 lead here Eden Sharaf just not able to apply any pressure to the defending champion and at the moment it's a walk in the park for Trump who's now just two frames from victory <laughs> leading 3-0 quarters of an hour here and he's 3-0 down to Judd Trump he's had a couple of half chances but he's yet to score significantly. And Trump has done what's been necessary to build that commanding early advantage. This is the last frame for the interval. John Higgins, I can tell you, has doubled his lead now over Mark Davis. So 2-0 to Higgins. Ben Williston and Hossein Vafai level at one apiece. Mike Dunn has taken the opener against Rory McLeod, but McLeod now on a break of 79, so that's going to be one all. Don't think that was going to be a quick match. Well, that's unlucky again. He's taken on the red, but I'm unfortunate to see the red. Go over the corner. It's not happening for him at the moment, I'm afraid. 
Even when he is taking them on and missing them, he's just leaving Judd in. What? Don't need to give this guy any encouragement to pot them. Was terrific. I mean, dropped it in dead weight. I thought he might have had too much angle to stay on the black, but played it really well. That was clever. Just pushing into the red there. Well, the way he's playing, you expect this to be 4 0 going into the interval. Well, I've got to say, really, from Eden's point of view, that's a, that's a yeah. long way back, of course. And difficult to see him coming back from there. And He's t there's no doubt Eden's taken them on, and they haven't gone in, but uh, that's the problem. They just uh, giving easy chances to Judd, really. I think. I think he's missed that. Has he missed it? Yeah, I thought he had. It always was on that near jaw. Right, so this is a chance that Eden Sheriff has to grab with both hands. He's got to score from opportunities like this. Well, there's nothing wrong with that one, but again, he's well, he's been a little bit unfortunate there. It's a good pot from where the cue ball was. Will he take the blue one? That's a that's a big uh, big pot to take on really at this stage. Well, it looks like he is doing. He certainly tried to attack the balls from the start. He's gone for his long pots, but unfortunately for him, so far they've not been going in. This is another big one. That was a really good pot, given yeah. the situation. Yep, yeah. every credit. Mentioned he had two terrific wins to set up this oh. opportunity to take on Trump, beating Jamie Jones 5-3 and Ross Muir 5-0. Ross Muir made a maximum break, didn't he, earlier this season? So he can certainly play. And there's another good pot. Looks like he's beginning to find his feet here. It definitely needs this frame on the board, of course. I mean, you never know. Come out and then 3-2, things can happen. 4-0. Can't really see it uh, coming back from there, but so far so good here. But he's missed the black. Sounds like something has happened somewhere that's pretty exciting. Of course, there are lots of matches going on on the outside tables.
6. Mark Williams has levelled up, by the way, against Michael Holt on a frame apiece. Big match for both players who could potentially snaffle a place for Sheffield without having to go through qualifying. Okay. They've both got a lot to do. 14. Meanwhile, here on table one, it's looking like 4 0. Cannon, but unfortunately now with the pink that's been spotted, um, I don't think he's on anything here. Well, unless Judd's thinking about the uh, the plant, which will be outrageous, really. But uh, there's not much else on. 39 in front, still 59 on the table. Well, I suppose he could take this on and play with an element of safety. Oh. <laughs> Audacious. What a terrific shot that was because there was so much distance between the Reds. You just can't do anything wrong at the moment, Judd Trump. And he'll be hoping so he can keep it going for another five or six weeks. So Final day of the World Championship takes place on the 1st of May this year. So Could seven. it be May Day for Trump? So eight. Well, certainly entertaining the fans here in Beijing. He's got, he's got a massive fan base as well in China, Judd Trump. He really has. And no surprise, given the way he plays, he is so exciting to watch. And the green here. Oh. Hang on, has he got the cannon as well? Oh, one lucky but frame over. Great pot that was. Even though it ended up being a foul. But Judd Trump is uh, steamrolling Eden Sharaf right now. We're already at the mid-session interval here in Beijing. And Trump has cruised into a 4-0 lead. That's 14 frames out of 15 at this year's China Open. And Eden Sharaf with a nigh on impossible task to turn this around. After the break, Judd Trump leading 4-0. Bay in frame five, Judd Trump 4 0 up on Eden Sharaf. Judd Trump just back underway then, needing only one more frame after the mid session interval to clinch victory. Eden Sharaf had a decent chance at the start of the fourth and missed a black off its spot. John Higgins, I can tell you, on table two, has now moved 3-0 in front of Mark Davis. Higgins clinching that frame on the final brown. So Higgins just a couple of frames away from the round of 16. <laughs> Nothing going Eden Sharaf's way at the moment. Never easy to control the positional side of a shot like that. The pot, of course, is extremely easy, but getting the cue ball exactly where you want it when it's right over the pocket. And that just made the black a little bit trickier. At the moment, though, I think Trump feels as though 
he can go for everything save for the knowledge that he's probably going to be back sooner rather than later so Eden Sharif really has to start scoring hasn't done himself what? justice so far today after those two excellent wins to get to the last 32 Jamie Jones and Ross Muir dismissed for the loss of only three frames combined Apologies for one or two technical glitches That's that right. we're what? encountering at the moment. We're on the case, trying to sort those out. But once again, Sharif missing a pot that he should have got, really. What? Just a reminder that later on, Ronnie O'Sullivan is back in action, as is Ding Jung Wee. Two players who could, of course, face each other in the round of 16. We'll have full coverage of the evening session here in Beijing. Dave Hendon and Joe Johnson will be here for that one. Doug Trump back in. That normally spells trouble for his opponent. Six. His triumph at the Players' Championship was his seventh ranking title. <laughs> Beat Ronnie O'Sullivan earlier in the season in a thrilling final at the European Masters, coming from behind to win in a final frame decider. Runner-up at the English Open, the Gibraltar Open and the Welsh Open. It's been a tremendous season for Trump. His consistency has been outstanding. Well, that's a surprise. And yet another chance for Sharaf, and this is a good one. What? Tian Peng Fei has pulled a frame back against Martin Gould. So 2 1 now to Gould. And the winner of that, remember, plays whoever comes through this one. Rory McLeod, who lost the first frame to Mike Dunn, now 2 1 up. Ben Williston and Hossein Vafai level at 1 all. Sean Murphy has gone to the interval with a 3-1 lead over Gary Wilson. 2-1 Ali Carter leading Michael White and 2-1 Michael oh. Holt leading Mark Williams. Both of those players still in with a shout of qualifying for the World Championship as of right without having to play three okay. qualifying rounds. Can't believe it's come around so quickly, Mike. Amazing. I mean, this season has been a blur, hasn't it, really, with the amount of tournaments we've had. Amazing. Yes, the World Championship starts on the Saturday the 15th of April. Two and a half weeks' time. Mm. Well, one player in particular, of course, the defending world champion, Mark Selby, knows when he's playing. He'll be playing on the first day, of course, on the Saturday morning and evening. It's just a question of where everybody fits into the, the seedings and the draw as to uh, when they will be playing.
Going back to plan A. Don't think you can see enough of the one there, the pink. Nicely played. He knew he was going to the other edge. So it just needs a bit of an angle on this black. Just to go into the next red. Doesn't want this to be dead straight. Don't think the red near the pink goes to the corner. to force the angle there to get back for one of these reds. He was unlucky to, to finish fairly straight on the black. Any angle, he could have just dropped it in for the red to the left corner. But uh, this is tricky. He's got this red to the middle, but to stay on the black or the blue, he's got to be careful here. He can miss this. Well, like I said, he was playing it with pace and there was always a, a chance of that happening. I think Jed had to just swerve the cue ball around the blue there a little. Got away with that a little bit. Judd, he could have easily pushed that right over the corner. He's just got off the boil a little bit here, Judd, since the uh, the interval. I mean, uh, he probably wanted to stay out there at 4-0, get the job done. But Eden here is an eight, with an 18-point lead, looking for his first frame on the board. He got the pop, but look at that. Let's go. That's finished. <laughs> He's had a touch there.
Oh, and the miss. Top top four. Sharif very unlucky to find himself snookered. But it's been that kind of day for Eden. He's not really done himself justice. He's not played as he can. And he's not had any luck either. And that tends to be the way, doesn't it, when you're struggling and your opponent's flying, that they get the rub of the green to go with it. Yeah, he hasn't shied away from the pots, has he? He's taken them on, just not gone in, as we've mentioned. But uh, this, is a, this is a tough escape here. Three cushions. Try and drop on the red on the top cushion. Oh, he's not hit that hard enough. And it's slightly the wrong oh, angle, so I think that's going to go back again. I think Judd, it's not going anywhere, he'll be sat in his chair. Well, he's going to have a look, but I'll be surprised if he doesn't put this back. Well, can he see enough of this one? Hmm. Well, there you go. From that, our angle, I didn't think he could see enough of that, Red. It was a terrific pot. Is this the beginning of the end for Eden Sheriff? Just nine points in front, but not for long. Well, he was trying the cannon there, didn't have to. Now he's out of position. Honours even now between Michael Holt and Mark Williams. They're at their mid-session interval Seven. two apiece. Likewise, Ali Carter and Michael White level at two all. Martin Gould's about to go 3-1 up on Tiang Peng Fei at the interval. It's looking likely to be Trump against Seven. Gould Seven. in the next round. Just three points in it then. Very close to that red. Played on the pink there, it's gone a bit too far, I think. Well, that's, well, from there, it's not too bad. I think you can cannon into the red on the cushion. Hold the white. Another chance for Judd to wrap up this match. Oh, he's got the double kiss, not now. Scrappiest frame of the match by far, but once again, it's Trump in front. Still 43 on the table. That's Trump, seven. Way too thick from Judd Trump with the attempted pot. So another chance for Eden Sharif, and this isn't a bad one. The blue is a bit awkward. One. Well, he's ever done that. Might be the green now to get on this final red.
it's going to be all about the blue here. Could get on the yellow. The good angle to nudge the blue after the screen. I'm sure he's thinking about it. Well, you should attempt to move the blue here now. Cushion first, about quarter ball, half ball contact, he'll be on the green. I think he's got to take a slight risk. I mean, he can play yellow, green, and then from the brown, but I think I'd play it now. Well, that was the only danger of that shot, getting underneath the blue, and now he's left the white near the cushion. He just got too much into the white there, and this is a tough pot on the green. It certainly is. Pretty much dead straight and close to the cushion. Awkward queuing. If he gets it, it could be a frame winner. Yeah, it's very missable, though. Hmm. A long way off. So, dead level with 25 remaining. I think we should have a go at this, try and get on the brown mate. Oh. Yeah, Eden was a little bit unlucky. When he played the cannon into the blue from the yellow, he just got too much on the white and it went sort of what we call underneath the blue with the contact and left himself the awkward green. Well, if he can power this in and get on the blue, he could be all over. Yeah, hanging in the middle. I'd say he's queuing well for, isn't he? Slow down though. Slow Seven. down. Woo, slow down. Oh, anyway, but there. He hit that too well, didn't he? So, a temporary reprieve at least for Eden Sharav. Trump, seven in front, 18 left, but snookered on the blue. I mean, he might come off the side cushion and pot this blue here and still win the match. He needs blue and pink. Stranger things have happened at this game of snooker. Don't be surprised if this goes in. Well, he's walking on water at the moment, isn't he? He played that quite brilliantly. And look at the position he's got to go with it. This for the match. Judd Trump is looking pretty unstoppable at the moment. He's known on occasion as the Juddernaut. And he's playing like one. <laughs> My goodness me, another terrific performance.